How can we receive the Holy Spirit? Acts 2, verse 38. Peter spoke to the Jews, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist spoke about the coming of the Holy Spirit when he said in Matthew 3, verse 11, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus told his apostles, Luke 24, verse 49, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. John the Baptist tells us of the reception of baptism before the reception of the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus himself was baptized by John, and then the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. John the Baptist did not have to be baptized first, but he received the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb at the moment when the Virgin Mary greeted Elizabeth, his mother. Baptism purifies us from the stain of original sin and allows us to enter into the body of Christ, close us with his light and fills us with sanctifying grace. But unfortunately, if we are not holy, we fall into sin and begin to lose that holy relationship with the Lord. It is impossible to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit if we are in sin or if we carry hidden resentments in our soul. After John's baptism, people still needed to receive the baptism of the Lord in order to receive the Holy Spirit. That baptism of the Holy Spirit, of which John the Baptist speaks, is also a baptism of fire. The apostles received it on the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit was manifested in the form of tongues of fire. What they received was manifested outwardly in their expression of praise to God and in the gift of prophecy. Then they were able to speak in foreign tongues and receive wisdom and power from on high to proclaim the gospel and work miracles in Jesus' holy name. Inwardly, they were filled with joy, filled with courage to bear the testimony and live only for the Lord. We see that the requirements to receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit are a total surrender to God as the apostles did faithfully. They also prayed, asking for the Spirit. Their life was totally dedicated to the Lord, and that is why they received the Holy Spirit. With the baptism of the Lord that they had already received, they had not received the Holy Spirit in a total form. In John 20, verse 22, Jesus breathed his breath to them after the resurrection and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Neither were they filled completely. However, they received it in fullness on the day of Pentecost. We have here a clear view of how the soul must pass through several states before it is completely filled, that is to say, to have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. These steps are, first, repentance, second, baptism, third, prayer in expectation of the Holy Spirit, and fourth, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something that few of us baptized with water receive in fullness. In our Catholic Church, we are satisfied with receiving baptism and the sacraments, and sometimes we do not make efforts to be filled with the Holy Spirit and experience the baptism of the Spirit. 
which is spoken of in the Holy Scriptures. For when we receive this baptism, we receive the gift of tongues. We receive gifts of healing, deliverance, word of knowledge, prophecy, discernment, wisdom, counsel, and many more. See Mark 16, verses 17 to 20, explaining the gifts that accompany the believers. Dear brother, sister, have you received any of these gifts? If so, blessed be the Lord, for you have opened your heart in such a way that the Spirit of the Lord has come to reign in your soul. If you have not received any of the above-mentioned gifts, Rejoice! Today we are going to learn how to receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit. First step. First of all, you have to repent of all the sins of your life. Are you ready for the coming of the Lord at this time? If God were to call you to the afterlife now, how would you feel? Are you at peace? Are you sure? You have nothing written in the book of life that is a reproach to the Lord. In order to experience total conversion, we must abandon sin, the world, and the devil completely. And this requires hating even the smallest sin. We have to look at sins as a crown of thorns on the Lord's head that we have placed with our pride in materialism, we have to see all our lust as whips to the Lord. We have to see our bad works as nails in His hands. We have to see our bad steps as nails in His feet. We have to see our faults into sin in the wounds of His knees. We have to see the ugliness of our souls in the profaned and disfigured face of Jesus. We have to see all our sins as the burden of the cross that Jesus carried and that caused that painful sore on his shoulder. We have to see that our sinfulness cost him all the wounds, pains, bloodshed, tears, and anguishes in those of his blessed mother. We must also see that our indifference in all our bad life caused the piercing of his heart by the lands. We must look at all this in this way in order to be able to have the pain of having offended him, in order to feel true contrition. It is only this way that our soul can become a worthy temple of the Lord's presence. Second step. The baptism we received was for us to enter into Christ and to be faithful to Him. If we have sinned, we have profaned this relationship with the Lord. This happens because we still have an inclination to sin. So we must totally renounce any kind of sin. We must renounce Satan and all his pumps. Only then can we be sure that we are living the promises of our baptism and that we are clean to receive the Holy Spirit. Step 3. We must pray for the Holy Spirit to descend upon us. The Holy Spirit does not descend automatically. We must burn with desire for Him. God comes to fill His temple when we show Him our fidelity by renouncing sin and committing ourselves not to offend Him again. It is not easy but it is indispensable. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. He comes to make us holy. So we must surrender our entire will by denying ourselves. This is living only for the Lord. Then we must pray continually to establish a dialogue with the spouse of the soul, the Holy Spirit. Fourth step, the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is such a great thing. Not many Catholics claim to have it. Not so many care about it. But it is truly a gift that God gives to those that open themselves 
to that holy power. In order to become a saint, a person must be first filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I would like to share my personal experience on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. About 30 years ago, I prayed intensely for the coming of the Holy Spirit in my life. The Lord heard my prayer. His Spirit filled me in such a way that I felt like a new creature born in Christ. From that moment on, I felt the voice of God speaking to me in my heart, and He continues to speak to me daily. The Blessed Virgin Mary also speaks to me. I received the gift of tongues. With this gift, I worship God daily, and I reprove demons. I received the gift of healing through which the Lord has healed many people with my prayers. Not all, though, because everything only happens according to the will of the Lord. I received the gift of deliverance of people influenced by the devil. And so I have cast out devils a good number of times. I also received the gift of proclaiming the word of God, the gift of visions of souls in purgatory and some other visions. But of all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the most precious gift that I have received is the gift of hearing the voice of God in my heart. This is referred to in the scriptures as the gift of prophecy. The Holy Spirit has these gifts ready for you. So start praying, brother, sister, the Lord wants to fill you. Open your heart to this new Pentecost that the Lord wants to give you. May the Lord our God bless you and fill you with His Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. If you like this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share on social networks. And don't forget to leave your valuable comments. How much do you desire to receive the Holy Spirit? God will respond to your prayers according to your desire. God bless you.